Hello everyone, this is My Life for Hire, and today I want to talk about my tennis techniques and the evolution, how I change my techniques, uh, how I experiment with them. So for the longest time, I've been imitating Roger Federer's forehand serve and and everything. I've been playing like Roger Federer's forehand for forever, for for years, and uh, it's my most comfortable technique to hit forehand. So, something like this. That. So it requires a lot of uh, whipping and uh, some wrist, snapping the wrist as well. So sometimes it doesn't work that well, uh, especially when I don't hit the timing right. It could hurt my elbow, it could hurt my wrist. And yesterday when I was playing, I thought my wrist was not, it was, I was not feeling very comfortable with my wrist. Something wrong with my wrist. It was hurting a little bit, so I didn't want to play the Roger Federer style, which is pretty demanding. Pretty demanding. It's strong. It's uh, very powerful. Very flat. I, I enjoy playing this way very much. But um, yeah, yesterday I just had to change it. And there's this another style that I, I've been trying to develop in the past month, I guess. Uh, that is something similar to more classic. Swing is like more like an Agassi kind of thing. Um, let me show you. It's more like a like this. You just back swing like this. Very easy. You don't do anything fancy. You just pull it back and boom. Pull it back and boom. And this way, I can use the body rotation a little bit more uh, instead of relying heavily on my elbow and the wrist snapping the racket. This way, I'm more relaxed. Uh, I'm more at ease. And it feel like it just feels great. I can generate a lot of top spin as well because I can just whip from low to high like this very, very, very fast. So it's very, very different techniques, and um, I'm actually surprised that I'm, uh, I got used to this kind of new technique very, very quickly. So yeah, yesterday I played like this, and it was very fun and uh, was very effective as well because I can actually hit pretty precise shots with this technique, uh, if I want to hit down the line like this, or uh, if I want to cross the court like that very easily. And uh, you can add a lot of top spin, top spin and a lot of speed as well. So definitely awesome. I, by the way, I always use Eastern uh, grip. Uh, also, you know, imitating Roger Federer, of course. So yeah, but when I do this kind of shots, I sometimes I could turn a little bit to the right side and turn towards semi-western a little bit but it doesn't matter I still I prefer eastern style so yeah I, I was playing like this it was fun also my feet was a little bit lazy yesterday I didn't I was not moving properly I wasn't doing a split step split step properly but it didn't matter uh, it was just uh, having fun another big change that I've made was my serve actually I guess is an improvement because typically I would imitate Roger Federer let me just show you how I do it so then up there I don't know and do it over here so I really do it like this right like Roger Federer like this playing Man. and generally I toss the ball a little bit too low I think so the result is that it, it, it it's very difficult for me to hit over the net uh, when I toss it very low. I would have to add a lot of spin, uh, back spin or top spin. I had to add some spin to, in order to let the ball fly over the net because you can't hit flat shot when the ball is this low. It, physically, it's impossible. So yeah, I had a lot of difficulty in the past month, especially when I was playing the double tournament and I made so many double faults and my teammate was flipping out and I was uh, I was I was getting frustrated I didn't know how to serve anymore and I just made more and more errors so it was terrible so uh, recently I just started to toss higher much much higher toss the ball much higher before it was this high now I toss this high now. before it's this high now it's this high maybe double it so yeah I, I toss it really high and wait a little bit longer toss it really high I mean, I stay at this position a little longer, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's not the smoothest, but we're experimenting, we're trying new things. So we toss a little bit higher, and wait for the ball to, to be about 
dropping down and then we go up maybe jump a little bit that would add more force toss really high and this way I can add I can have much better success success rate especially on my first serve I can hit really big and flat serve so I've been serving much faster than ever now with this kind of technique just by tossing the ball really high wait for it to drop and then and just extend yourself your arm all the way to the highest point and bam snap it flat shot and of course it's uh, it's not easy to hit uh, every first surfing in it's very difficult for me uh, trying new new technique so sometimes when I'm not very 100% sure I tend to add a little bit more uh, side spin to a little more slice to the first serve you know it's already very fast because I toss it very high I'm able to pressure it push it down downward so it's already very fast now I add uh, you know a little bit side spin so to, uh, to just to make sure the ball hits in you know it doesn't fly out or uh, hit the net so that yeah, is very convenient. Also, another point is that I have to pass a little bit more forward. That makes it also much easier to hit inside the box and over the net, uh, not into the net, because you're physically it's much easier for you to hit into the box if you toss it forward and higher, forward and higher. There you go. That's the evolution of my new techniques I'm, that I'm trying. It's very successful. And I still need to work on my second serve though. My second serve is really weak and uh, I still have a psychological issue with the second serve. I'm kind of traumatized by the tournament. Before the tournament, I was pretty fine with the Roger, Fe Roger Federer style of, uh, uh, of serve. I was just like, oh, very relaxing. Boom. Even second serve, oh, very relaxing like this. Slice, slice a little bit. But now I don't know what, how to do with second serve anymore. Now what, uh, what I do is kind of toss it a little bit lower. My second serve, I toss it much lower than the first serve. I toss it lower to have more security, to be more, you know, the higher you toss, the, the more chance that the ball is irregular. It, you could toss it to a, a wrong direction, you know, it, it will deviate from the, uh, your regular hitting path a little bit more. So by tossing a little bit lower, you have less possibility of making an error. So it's safer this way. So I toss a little bit lower and I add a top swing like this. So using my wrist a little bit more like this. And I have to hit the ball to kind of uh, make the ball to fly upwards and then land into the box instead of a, you know, first service downward uh, tra trajectory. Second serve is like a upward and then, and then drops drops the ball. Like, it is like you, you are tossing the ball instead of uh, smashing the ball kind of thing. Uh, but still, I, I, keep, I, I make a lot of uh, mistakes, but still it's fine. I, uh, yesterday I hit two aces, so I'm very, um, very happy with that result. I also did two or three double faults. I think I can work on my double faults. As long as I'm able to ace people, I think we're improving. Uh, double thought is something we can just practice and uh, uh, work on on our mentality and overcome. But uh, yeah. being able to hit ace is something different. You know, you have to uh, know the technique well and hit correct timing and everything. So I think uh, being able to hit aces is, is definitely worth the trouble of going double thought at this stage. At, at this learning stage, if I was a professional player, obviously. <laughs> I would be more smart and also professional players don't double fault that much. <laughs> okay, that's my uh, forehand and my, and my serve techniques. And those are the most important techniques in tennis. And backhand, sometimes you can be a little bit more tolerant, a little bit more, how do you say that, in, uh, forgiving. Uh, you don't have to hit perfect backhand, but I've improved my backhand over the years for uh, quite a quite a quite a bit back when I was in China when I played tennis in China I didn't know how to hit backhand topspin all I did was slice I mean I kind of uh, knew that motion is generally like this but I had zero security I didn't know how to 
the top speed, generate top speed. So my backhand was really weak. It's something I was reluctant to hit, and uh, I couldn't play it defensively. Sometimes I just, I just when I hit backhand, it was always a gamble. But now I. 100% sure that when I hit backhand is top spin, uh, it can be defensive, and I can also uh, hit a, a, a offensive backhand to be aggressive, to be fast and more flat. Uh, so yeah, I've improved a lot on my backhand as well, but still it's not as good as my forehand. Obviously, I hit probably 90%. Uh, forehand my backhand I still use a lot of slice because it's just very powerful it changes the rhythm of the game a little bit so it's very convenient and uh, it's easier to reach the ball that is very far from you as well generally I'm, I'm very comfortable hitting top spin with backhand like, like this top spin defensive play and when I get close to the net I can also hit it flat, very flat, very fast the backhand uh, to try to hit a winner shot as well. So yeah, that's my backhand. I, I know how to control the direction with backhand as well. I can hit down the line or uh, you know, cross the court. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's so much more comfortable right now. Yeah, I'm very happy with it. Obviously my backhand needs work, but uh, I'm happy where it is right now. I'm relying much more on my forehand, so forehand is obviously way more important for me at this stage of uh, play. Uh, and then last thing I want to talk about my rackets. This is my old rackets. This, it has served me over 10 years, right? Yeah, actually 11 years. I got this racket in 2010, 20, 2000, 2009 or 2010 ish. Uh, so yeah, 11 years is really old ten tennis racket. Um, it has a very small racket head size, which means that you, you have to uh, use more strength to generate power because the racket itself doesn't generate as much power. It's more precise, uh, more control to this racket. So I do enjoy using this racket because you can hit as hard as you can and the ball still stays inside and can generate top spin as well. But now we have, what we have is this. I have a bigger racket head size. This one is, wait, how much bigger? Five square inches? Seven square inches is a really big difference actually. That is 90, this is uh, 97. So this one can generate very, very big power very easily so I don't have to hit over hit the ball every time I can just be very gentle very smooth and fluid like this like you know the, 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 the technique as I mentioned before like accuracy kind of back swing and swing rotate your body and uh, use your body or use your torso rotation to drive the arm uh, very easy I can just hit very strong forehand this way um, and also this adds a lot of speed in your first serve as well with a bigger head size so it's a very very cool um, I don't know I just use them interchangeably sometimes I feel more uh, using bigger head size sometimes I feel the small one and yeah I don't have a specific preference if you if you tell me I have to t uh, to play a tournament tomorrow which rackets do I use I, I just probably bring both of them <laughs> I don't, I don't mind to use either of them. Okay, yeah, that's it. That's all the techniques and the changes that I've been making in the past two, one or two months that I've been playing uh, tennis pretty intensively, intensively, intensively. Not every day, you know, back in, when I was in China, tennis, tennis there was free tennis court. We could play every day. I could play four hours, five hours, six hours a day and uh, here now is where everything is different. I have to pay and I cannot uh, book more than one hour a day so I can't play that much as much as when I was in China. Uh, everything is, you know, they have a, a system here is very different so I can't play as much as I played in China but still I try to play as much as possible maybe two, three, three times a week. Doesn't sound that much actually, <laughs> actually. I realize that I actually don't play as much. Yeah, why don't they allow me to book more than one hour a day? I don't know. If I play every day, 
you know, every day, every single day, maybe two hours for a month, I would become so good. I would become so much better. Yeah, you know, this kind of a tennis or any sports, I think um, you have to train it intensively. So if you play once a week for 10 years, you don't really get anywhere. But if you play very intensively, uh, three, four hours a day, every day for four weeks, you get much, much, much better, much, much, much faster uh, in this way by training intensively uh, than just you know pacing them out over the over the years. You know, it's very different. All right, that's uh, that's everything I wanted to talk about. This is kind of first video of me talking about tennis. You know, I've been uploading tennis video, me playing tennis for a very long, long time. Kaba is my first talking head tennis talk. I hope you enjoy it. I don't know, it could be helpful for you. I'm not a very good player, I'm just you know, a hobbyist, enjoying the sport as an amateur player, having fun. Uh, yeah, that's it, see ya, see ya.